If you sell patriotic and MAGA shirts, clothing, mugs, hoodies, and more, there's just one place you need to go where you will find all the pro-conservative designs you will ever need. Right Way Design Company on Etsy. Online at Etsy.com slash shop slash Right Way Design CO. They have a great selection of patriotic, pro-Trump, and Americana designs. You can simply download them and add them to your favorite products. Whether you want to make a t-shirt for yourself or sell them in your store, Right Way Design company has amazing designs that will make you proud to be an american these designs are perfect for events rallies or just wearing around town show your pride in maga and america with designs from right way design company on etsy all the designs come to you in a png digital file that are ready to place on your favorite items they're very affordable too right way design company on etsy online at etsy.com slash shop slash right way design co that's etsy.com slash shop slash right way design co you are listening to the brian craig show podcast broadcasting from sunny south florida brian is joined by his wife and co-host kathy follow brian on social media at brian and now brian and kathy welcome to the program everyone i'm brian craig always joined by my wife and co-host kathy Thanks, everyone, for tuning in, and make sure that you subscribe on whatever platform you listen to us on. And remember, the Brian Craig Show podcast is on all podcast platforms, including Spotify, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcast, Audible, and wherever you go for podcasts. We're on all podcast platforms. All right, well, there's a lot going on, a lot happening, a very busy day, busy week in the news. and. This week on Thursday night, the January 6th primetime hearings begin, and there's a couple stories about that that are out that are just bizarre. One, they, they, meaning the January 6th Kangaroo Committee, has hired a former executive from ABC that was producer on Good Morning America and Nightline to produce the January 6th hearings, which I've never heard That's incredible. of a television producer producing a congressional hearing, which to- tells you it's all going to be fake, hyped you know what up that tells stuff. You? That tells you that the evidence they have alone is not good enough. Yeah. It's not exciting enough. It's not compelling enough. Yeah. And it's not enough evidence to convict anybody. So they have to take it all yep. and wrap it up in a nice little package, produced, glossed over. They're probably going to add music or drama or you know what I mean. I wouldn't be surprised, would you, if they added some some soundtrack? Well, they shouldn't be background. They to, should to present it to you in a way where you say, "Wow, this is incredible." They should not be. They, they they shouldn't be hyping up and altering testimony from Absolutely. people in front of Congress. Which is and what that tells doing. you everything you need to know. So that's one thing. That's Thursday night primetime. And then it was announced today that this is not just going to be primetime on CNN and MSNBC. It is going to be carried on the three networks, ABC, NBC, and CBS. Now, it's the summertime. Kind of, kids are out of school. So, you know, so a lot of TV shows, most TV shows – on the networks are in reruns right now. So the networks don't seem to mind, I guess, because most of the programming is in reruns right now yeah. on the networks. I cannot remember the last time that three networks carried a prime time event going on in the Congress of the United States. I have yeah. no recollection of any of that happening. It's very bizarre. And what they're what they're doing with that with this television producer, Good Morning America, Nightline, so very dramatic, altering the congressional record to fit their their narrative, putting it on the three networks. They and and then they just arrested this Enrique guy from the Proud Boys, who's an FBI informant and charged him with sedition. Crazy. And then they arrested Peter Navarro on Friday, put him in John Hinckley's cell. He's out on bail, I guess. They're trying to hype up this yeah. this thing. And then to it's have very it very orchestrated. Yeah, it's a it's an entire and very staged performance. And yeah, it I, is. It's a performance. And I saw this article in Media Eye. Media Eye's pretty left wing. I mean, it's very left wing. And they have a, a story. Fox News and Newsmax TV are not carrying the hearings. And you know what? They Smart shouldn't. Move. They shouldn't. Everyone else is carrying them. So why should you carry what everyone else is carrying? Exactly. But listen to this headline. This is Media Eye. 
Fox News is betraying its own viewers and selling out the country with disgraceful decision not to air January 6th hearing. News broke Monday evening that Fox News, notice they left off Newsmax because they're panicked about Newsmax, right? News broke Monday evening that Fox News will not show the first session of the January 6th Select Committee hearing and will instead air its regular partisan opinion programming featuring hosts who have relentlessly attacked the investigation. Um, Judged entirely from a business perspective, the decision to ignore the hearings and instead run counter-programming for a loyal viewership not interested in in the events that took place on January 6th makes a lot of sense in terms of advertising revenue. But in terms of journalistic standards or even from a desire to keep an audience well-informed, the decision is nothing short of disgraceful and damaging to the nation. You know, and and they're putting profits over principles, they say. You know, this this committee could have aired their entire hearings for the last 10 months, and they didn't because they got nothing. They have to bring in some big TV producer to do yeah. editing, add glitz, do do some fake arrest leading up to it to, you know, to finally charge. They, they realized, oh, my goodness, we've charged no one with sedition. We got to do it. So they arrest the FBI informant Enrique here from the Proud Boys, who wasn't even in D.C. that day, by the way. The FBI picked him up on some weapons charge a couple days before, and I believe that was just to get him out of the out of the Capitol so he wasn't there when it happened. So he because he was an been an informant for several years. I mean, this this is something that I really think is going to backfire on them because people in this country are suffering so much with the gas prices, the baby formula problem, all these things going on. People don't want to hear this stuff and they don't care. They just want to be able to fill up their tank with gas yeah, and buy I baby agree. formula. I don't think people care. And they're at pissed all. that they're focusing on this instead of the things that are hurting them. Why do you think Fox isn't running these hearings? I think it's because they they're just afraid the audience will completely turn on them again like after the election they really took a hit. So yeah. I think that I think that's really what they're afraid of. I think Tucker might have told them, "Look, if you air this, you're going to lose everybody. I think they, it's, it's not a good move. It's pull it. See, that guy's wrong. Business-wise, it would be a bad move for Fox to air those hearings. It would be a yeah. very bad move. Well, what Fox will do is what we will do, and Newsmax will do the same thing. We will give analysis of what happens, and the analysis is is going to be brutal to these hearings. They're they're producing it too much they just can't air Does the it raw run all footage day or in the evening it's prime, in the evening they have a prime time presentation it's like a prime time special that i don't know how long insanity. it's going to be but um so yeah. is it the actual hearings continuing or is it a special where they're taking all their evidence and editing it for you to look at we're not sure yet it'll be all unveiled in prime time see this tells you what you need to know they can, they didn't want to air the hearings live because they don't want you to see what's really going on in real time that they can't edit and man- manipulate what they wanted to do is wait and see what they had what they had to work with and now they're going to take it and edit it manipulate it uh, and do things and present it to you through their filter, yeah. the way they want you to see it, not seeing it from the original source. Well, we did a poll on your channel on YouTube. Will you watch the January 6th hearing starting this week? We've had 1,600 votes. 11% said yes every minute, and 89% said no, will not watch it. So I think Fox made the right call because most yeah. of your audience is probably conservative, I would imagine. And uh, I really think it would have been a bad move for them to air that thing. Oh, yeah. They'll talk about it. They'll, but, that's for but sure, it, which is fine. But it, I think it was a smart move. But it does, it does make sense. If every other news outlet except right. Newsmax, if only Newsmax and Fox aren't carrying them. And by the way, it, I believe Fox Business is going to carry some of it. So I don't think that Fox News as a group is completely out. I think they're going to do something on Fox Business but keep Tucker Hannity and Laura Ingram on. It's so funny how these other networks who collectively don't even have as many views as Fox News altogether are telling Fox News what to do. <laughs> it's yeah. It's pretty, pretty funny. You don't want to listen to the losers on how to program no, your news I mean, network. Exactly. It's like if you're a championship football team, are you going to listen to all the teams that you beat to yeah. have in football strategy? Now, no, ju- I don't think so. Now, just a few minutes ago, uh, we watched Matthew McConaughey at the White House. You know, he his hometown is Uvalde, but the town's demographic has changed slightly since he was a boy there. 
And Matthew Ma- Matthew McConaughey, I don't know if he was acting or being himself at the White House today. He was out in the White House press briefing room, and it was a very dramatic and I emotional think he was presentation. Sincere. I think he was sincere. I'm not saying he wasn't sincere. You can be sincere and be acting, too, because you're in front of the camera. I don't think he was acting. I think this is how he is. I just don't think his acting is much different than what he's really like. Yeah. <laughs> so that's where the confusion lies. Well, I mean, I'm not saying he's not a good you know, actor, but I don't think his acting is much different than what he really – personally is yeah. is you know he he has never really played a character that's that much of a stretch that i can recall yeah. except for that dallas buyers club he was pretty you know that was pretty crazy but i thought he was very sincere and he visibly upset i think he made a lot of good points um you know i think he truly cares about the people in his hometown he was obviously moved he grew up there till he was 11 he was born yeah. there his mom was a teacher there and he met the parents and uh I think what he said made sense, you know, that he said that the media sensationalizes these shootings and they have to stop doing that. And he said the politicians are too busy uh, throwing counter punches at each other and attacking each other to get anything done. He said we need to return to American values and family. And and, and I thought, you know, yeah. I thought he said a lot of good things. I mean, there, you know, he doesn't sound like a crazy liberal. I'll tell you that. Well, you know, I'll tell you, you know, I, you know, everybody likes Matthew McConaughey. Who doesn't like Matthew yeah, McConaughey? of course. Okay, so, you know, we all like Matthew McConaughey. Okay. And when he, when he came out there at the White House today, he was in the White House press pre, uh, briefing room at the podium, you know, and he did a very emotional presentation talking about the teachers and their families and the kids, and he showed a pair of Converse that one of the, that one of the girls was wearing when she was killed that her parents gave to him yep. and the Converse shoes is how they identified her because yeah, she sad. was so damaged from the shooting. Yeah. And uh, that was very emotional. Matthew McConaughey suggests two things that I agree with. And some of you might get upset with me about this. I was, you know, I'm in Ron DeSantis's free Florida and we don't have open carry yet. Although governor DeSantis promises to give us open carry before he leaves office. That's like top of his agenda and he will get it done. But we do have um, a five-day waiting period. I did not know that in Texas they had no waiting period. There is no waiting period. They do a – there is a uh, a criminal background check done. Every, every place you go to a gun store, they do a federal criminal background check. But you walk in. They do the check. And everything's computerized these days. And you walk out with your gun. I don't agree with that. I think there should be – a waiting period on gun purchases. I know a lot of you don't agree with that, but the reason I believe there should be is to have a cooling off period. People get pissed off at one another, and someone goes and gets a gun, and that's that's that. So I I do think a, uh, a waiting period is a good thing. The other thing that yeah. he said, and I know many of you won't agree with this either, but I I agree with this. I I believe the age to purchase a gun. Should be twenty one. It's already twenty one for that handguns. That kind of gun. I don't think handguns. You should. No have handguns. You have to be twenty one now. Well, that should change to eighteen. No, no, this no. This no, should no. be twenty one. No, I think all gun purchases twenty one is fine. I don't agree with that because what if you're eighteen years old, a girl, you're living on your own, working. You know, not everybody goes off to a nice, safe college. Not that they're that safe. We can't have a gun at the college. Girl or a young guy. No, I know. And you're you're living on your own you're and all working. Fine. Yeah. You know, I think you have the right to defend yourself. So I think you should be allowed to purchase handguns at 18. Well, no, there's a difference. But oh, not, no, no, no. But I think 21 is reasonable for these no, other no. types okay. of rifles. There's a, there's a difference. I'll explain the difference in a minute. 21 to purchase a gun, as far as I'm concerned, is is fine. Okay? It's been 21 for a handgun for as long as I can remember, 18 for for the long guns. You know, it should it should be 21 – Maybe for guns that have a certain capacity ammunition, you know, like, you know, but even though the law is 18 and 21, you do not have to be 18 or 21 to possess. You can still possess a gun and use a gun when you're underage or not the age. Not everybody has somebody to buy, but these, you, you know, but, but this is not a solution because if you guys remember, no one's talking about this at Columbine. The guns that they used, I can't remember exactly which which guns the Klebold and Harris used, 
but they were bought through a straw purchase, which which means right. they got someone to buy them for them. Yeah. So raising the age to twenty one is not going to stop these these things. You um, never know; the, it the, might the, the deter Sandy Hook, some people. It the, might deter yeah, maybe, some people, make it a little more difficult. The Sandy Hook kid. The Sandy Hook kid, his mother owned guns, and that that animal, he took guns from home that his mother had bought. And, true, true, and everything else. There, I remember there was a um, there was a school shooting about fifteen or twenty years ago. That was a first grade classroom where a first grader took a gun to school and shot a girl and killed her. And he, it was his grandfather's gun. There was um, an incident here in Florida fifteen or twenty years ago where a student shot a teacher with a handgun, and it was um, an adult. And I can't remember who in the family the gun belonged to, but it was he was a, um, a middle school kid. He went home and got a gun that an adult in his home legally owned. So raising the age to buy guns, a lot of these shootings take place with guns that the monsters didn't buy. Now, True. of course, we got these couple of recent ones, Uvalde and Parkland. Those were done. Those were bought by the shooter, so I understand. But in these other cases, um, they 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 get guns from home and everything else. Now, so far as having a waiting period or anything, there there are not going to be any changes in gun laws in in Texas. Texas is a very conservative state, and no politician is going to stand up no, and, God, and, no. and put any restrictions on gun ownership or purchasing in Texas. You know, guns have been around. You know, it's not going to happen since the beginning of this country. Even before, it's a part of our culture. It's That's a right. part of our heritage, and uh, it's a part of uh, of who we are. Is is having the right to protect right. yourself, the right to own arms, to bear arms, is part of our constitution. And this, to me, you know, I agree with you. I don't know if changing these laws is going to make any difference. The problem is not guns. The problem is society. Okay. The problem is right. these kids, the way they are being raised. You have ki- parents taking their kids to drag shows, okay, for fun. You have parents that don't stay married, that just yell and scream at each other all the time, abuse their children. You're not, they're not raising their children in a good home. If their children have mental illness issues, they're not taking them to the doctor. They're not getting them help. They're lazy. They don't want to deal with it. They don't want to be bothered. There are so many problems right now. And, you know, people just don't want to help each other and don't always want to get involved. You have problems with schools. You have problems with the police not helping, not running in and stopping these things, just sitting around, scratching their asses, doing nothing while kids are getting killed. There are so many other factors that go into this that are the cause of this. You know, they could fortify these schools so much more and make these schools so much safer. They're doing it in Florida. They've really cracked down on the policy mm. and they've really, I've, I've read many articles and they've talked about in the local news, they've changed all the locks on a lot of these schools. They've reinforced the doors. I mean, they're really taking steps after Parkland in Florida to make schools well, safer. Yeah. Why aren't they doing this everywhere? There are so yeah. many balls being dropped by these lazy, you know what it is? It's government employees. They're mm-hmm. lazy and they don't want to be bothered because they're going to get their check and get their pension. And I hate to say it, but a lot of government employees do the least amount possible because they're still going to get paid well, no matter what. You know, this, this, uh, listening to Matthew McConaughey Bring today, in private businesses. Yeah. Listening to Matthew McConaughey, he was talking about how he first got into guns and everything when he was a kid. See, part of the problem is, okay, because I know some of you will say, oh, 21, you can't do Um, You know, I I talk all the time. I've been a gun owner since I was 12, and it was a gun given to me by my father that was given to him by his, you know, my grandfather. It used to be years ago, young guys were introduced to guns by their dads and their grandfathers, and you were taught how to use them and the proper respect for them and everything else. And now, because liberals gave us no-fault divorce in the 1970s, yeah. which destroyed the American family. Absolutely. Um, Big problem. Young men do not have, in many, many instances, a, a role model in their family, a father or a grandfather, to introduce them to the – not only to the proper use of a gun, but the proper respect of a gun. They just – they watch video games. That's how they learn about guns. 
They turn 18, they go to the gun store. This kid and that's, came from that's a criminal a family. Yeah, that, well, His entire yeah. family have criminal records. Yeah. I yeah. mean, you know, what, what, yeah. how was this kid? I'm, yeah. not, I'm not saying that he's not responsible, but, you know, a lot of pro- these problems do start at home. And, you know, like I said, the parents are not involved. They let video games and social media raise their children. And they don't want to be bothered and, and don't get involved. And, and then you know other what? people have to pay the it's, price. It's easy for Matthew McConaughey to go out there and say, this is not a partisan issue. Just do the right thing. After the lockdowns and shutdowns and the out of control government, mm-hmm. gun owners and are not going to budge no, absolutely on, not. on and give a, give in on any restrictions. And and like, for example, true. for example, 21. Okay. Say say they come in and say, okay, we're going to raise the age to 21. Okay, we agree to that. Just Let's just say the NRA came out today and say, we will agree that long guns, 21, just like handguns. The Democrats will say, well, no, 25. So once you start going down the slippery That's slope, true. You, you get into an area that just is not realistic. Liberals yeah. make it very impossible to come to an agreement because they always want more. They always want to push the envelope further and you give them an inch and they take 10 miles. I mean, that's just how they are. And I think that's what is really making people afraid. And I think it's nice that he went up and spoke and I think he said a lot of nice things, but I don't think anything's going to come of it. Unfortunately, what they have to do is the local communities have to handle this because if you're going to depend on the federal government to help you, you're going to be waiting for the rest of your life because they're not going to do a damn thing. You have to get together with the local school board, the superintendent, with the principal, come up with a plan, reinforce, put some money in the budget, have fundraisers, do whatever you have to do to make that school safe and, and safer and, you and know, take it upon what, yourself to do this. What what kind of when you have kids at school, go to the school and ask them, what are your safety measures? What's going on here? What's your yeah. policy? What do you do if there's an active shooter? What get involved? Get and, involved. You know, the, the other thing too is like you see this at Uvalde. You can't depend on the on the government to protect no. you, the police. Exactly. You know, you guys remember TJ Hooker, the TV show with William Shatner? Yeah, and Adrian's oh, Med. Okay. A lot of people may not because I'm a huge Star Trek fan, a William Shatner fan. I am probably the only person other than William Shatner who knows the premise behind that show. William Shatner plays TJ Hooker, this police sergeant, right? The story behind T.J. Hooker is he was a detective, and he chose to go back to being a uniform cop because detectives come in after the fact, and he wanted to be out on the streets, be there when crime happens to help victims, Mm -hmm. and even that's a delay. You know, you have to be able to help and protect yourself, and, you know, this is – now think about this. You know, there's these these races going on in California now. I got some California primaries coming up, and the big debate in California – are uh, Democrats that are so soft on crime. So the Democrats nationwide mm-hmm. are soft on crime. Yep. They got no bail and all this other stuff. And at the same time that they're going for no bail, they're soft on crime. They want gun owners to give up gun rights it's incredible. that that they use to protect themselves and yep. their families. Yep. You, you can't have you can't take away the guns and right. restrict guns and at this and then have no bail and be exactly. soft on on crime. Now, I want to tell everyone, the BOGO extravaganza continues at MyPillow.com with our promo code Kane at checkout, of course, K-A-N-E. And if you would like to support this program and all the content I bring to you, which is the Steve Kane Radio Show, the Brian Craig Show podcast with Kathy and myself here, my YouTube channel, and everything else I do, a great way for you to support the program is to buy products from MyPillow and use the promo code Kane. That's our Promo code K-A-N-E at checkout, and you support all of my content. And you're also supporting Mike Lindell. They're really after him. I I was talking this morning on the radio. Mike Lindell is trending on Twitter today, and they are going after Mike Lindell like you wouldn't believe again. And They go, always, I tell you, they, nah, they always go after I him. I was though. surprised that he was trending today. Go, go to Twitter, type in Mike Lindell, and look at the things that they're saying about him. Yeah, never they, nice. They are working so hard to shut down his great company. So not only when you use our promo code Kane at checkout, you're supporting this program and all the content I bring to you. You're also supporting Mike Lindell. And Very important to yeah. keep that support going too. Well, that's really what's kept important. his company going. He's been kicked out of all the stores. Yeah. He can't sell on home shopping, QVC, Kohl's, Bed Bath & Beyond. And yeah. the BOGO extravaganza is buy one, get one free with our promo code Kane 
on over a dozen very, very popular products, the six-piece MyPillow towel sets, the Giza Dream Sheets, the, the classic MyPillow, the Giza Elegance Pillow. These are all buy one, get one free. And there's also some other items. There, there's blankets for your bed. There's throw blankets, the children's Bible story pillows, the entire Bible story collection. These are all BOGO. Those are awesome. Uh, Mike Lindell at MyPillow has couch pillows the, and, and many other items. So go to MyPillow.com, use our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E, and you will see the BOGO extravaganza right there at the top. Just click on that and you'll see all these great deals. We're going to take a quick break. When we get back, there is a lot more to talk about. We've only just begun. Don't go anywhere. We will be back right after this. Shivering and healing is two sides of one coin. Yearning and craving are too mysterious to be stored in the future. The book, Tormented Soul Solitude, available on Amazon, contains poems that have been inspired by true events. Some of them hold dreams, others love, an institutional need to discover the meaning of life, a replay for an unknown lover or friend, and a vigorous call for self-love conflicts. The journey to embracing free spirits and pure souls were ripped out by the cruelty of the world we live in. True feelings are put on display for the world to see in this very relatable book. It also gives readers a glimpse into the world of mental illness and how it can creep into the brain and sabotage the mind. Order your copy right now on Amazon, Tormented Soul Solitude, available in Kindle and paperback. What do you need help with right now? Anxiety? Insomnia? Stress? Stomach issues? Skin conditions? What about chronic pain? Or maybe something else? Have you thought about CBD? PureNaturalsHealth.com offers pure and natural CBD products that can help with many ailments that we all experience. Farmed in the fertile soil of Colorado, PureNaturalsHealth.com CBD is highly concentrated and effective. PureNaturalsHealth.com not only brings you the finest CBD, but at great prices. Right now, everything on the site is 20 20% off. That's right, 20% off. Better healing, flexibility, sleep, anxiety reduction, and more. PureNaturalsHealth.com. Do you love all things movies? Then you will want to add the Not Three Bad Podcast to your playlist. That's the number three. The Not Three Bad Podcast is hosted by three guys who truly love talking about films. They discuss and rank movies. They keep it light and fun, too. They talk about plot, scenery, the actors, writing, and more. The Not Three Bad Podcast is an in-depth talk show about all the movies that you watch. You will enjoy their analysis and unique take on movies. Add the Not Three Bad Podcast. That's the number three to your playlist right now available on spotify google podcast apple podcast and not three bad pod.com you are listening to the brian craig show podcast broadcasting from sunny south florida brian is joined by his wife and co-host kathy follow brian on social media at brian craig show.com and now brian and kathy Welcome back, everyone. I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. If you hear some noise in the background, it is being in Florida. It is hurricane season. It is rainy season. And it is raining outside harder than it did during the tropical storm on Saturday. So, uh, But we continue. So if you hear any noise in the background, which I don't know if you can hear it or not, it is really coming down it outside. It is coming down. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so um, Senator Debbie Stabenow, who's a, a real beaut, she, um, she's all excited. She's from Michigan, and she was, uh, <coughs> excuse me, just a little dry mouth. Okay, so Debbie Stabenow, she's the uh, Democrat, of course, senator from Michigan. And she's talking at a Senate hearing, and she's bragging uh, about how she doesn't worry about gas prices, not because she's a corrupt public official and is rich, but because she has an electric car. And she talked about driving from Michigan to D.C. and driving by gas stations. Listen to this. Debbie Stabenow. This is today. I do have to say just on the issue of uh, uh, gas prices after waiting for a long time uh, to have enough chips in this country to finally get my electric vehicle. I got it uh, and drove it from Michigan to here uh, this last weekend and went by every single gas station. It didn't matter how high it was. And so I'm looking forward to the opportunity for us to move to vehicles that aren't going to be dependent on the um, whims of the oil companies and the uh, international markets. Okay, so she left out a big part of the story. 
How often did she stop at a charging station and for how long? Mm -hmm. And how long did that drive take her compared to a drive in a regular car? And you know, you know what I'm talking about? And, and here's the other thing. Electricity isn't just out there. You go to a charging station, that electricity comes from a power plant, which is fueled by something, probably in most places not nuclear because the liberals are against nuclear power. So the increase in oil drives up the price of electricity, which is also going up nationwide, very high because the cost of energy is up. And it's, it's very easy for a corrupt public official and millionaire to brag about, oh, gas prices, no problem. Exactly. Just well, go out and get an electric car. She's all excited. I don't know what she means to buy, get enough chips. She has enough chips in this. She's finally reached a financial position where she can But she expects it. everyday Americans to run out and buy one right now. Yeah. Yeah, I she, mean, yeah. these cars are way overpriced. And until they get them to a reasonable price, I'd say 25000 is reasonable for a car. Uh, the, nobody's going to run out and buy these. Plus, they're adding on all these fees to cars right now. Plus, people can't even afford food. And to get regular gas, it's just not a good time to push this kind of stuff. But they have an agenda. They want to push this green stuff. And they're going yeah. to push it and force it on people no matter what. Because their thinking is they'll thank us in the end. It'll mm -hmm. be worth it. They'll be so glad. They'll be so happy. They might be suffering now. But don't worry. In the end, they'll mm -hmm. be patting us on the back. So grateful. No, they're just very, very out of touch, these people, and they really don't seem to understand. I mean, you have Biden going on TV saying how great the economy is. I can't figure out if they're just flat out lying, if they're completely clueless to what's really happening, or if they're just stupid. And I think it's a mix. I think it's a combination of all three because nobody is can be that out of touch yeah. with, with what's going on in this country to go on yeah. TV and say, everything's great, nothing to see here. When groceries are double, gas is double. Those are the two main things that everybody needs in this country is gas and food mm -hmm. and, and something across the board that brings people together politically when those things are out of control. We all understand inflation and gas prices do go up and fluctuate, but they're increasing so rapidly. People can't mm -hmm. keep up with the rate of inflation. It's so fast. And, and we have a gas station near us and we we were there last week and I went there. We were there yesterday. It was up 30 cents in a week. That's crazy. Usually gas prices stay really steady. They might go up a dollar, a cent here, a cent there. But this is like going up. A, and then they go back know. down and that's not happening. Right. They're I staying mean, up. you know, it's just a steady, steady incline. And it's and inflation is is also going up very quickly. Everything is like double what it was two years ago. So they can have their hearings on TV and they can have their like talking points and say all this. It does not matter because people are going to deal with what they're dealing with at home. And that's what, you know, I, I'm just looking at all these recalls for these liberal DAs and all this stuff. Liberal policies are failing. They're running amok, these liberals. Uh, Biden is not reining them in. And America is realizing that their policies are a joke, that they're a joke. And and that they need to be, uh, t you know, removed from office or outvoted. Yeah, because it's just and, ridiculous. You know, the these hearings they're doing in this talk of gun control, people are. Listen to this. This article. There's something called shrinkflation. Shrinkflation means prices are going up on products, but when you buy a product, you get less of it. Okay, listen oh, to this. Yes, this is a big thing. Listen to this. Honey Bunches of Oats cereal mm -hmm. has slashed the amount of cereal in their boxes by 17%. Gummy wow. Bear Packs are down to just four ounces. Angel Soft Toilet Paper is down from 425 sheets in a roll to th only 320 sheets. And by the mm -hmm. way, they don't cut the prices. Listen to this. As prices surge in the United States amid inflation levels not seen in 50 years, that's, that's you know, 1972. Right, a long time ago, companies have engaged in, in a practice called downsizing or shrinkflation to cut cost. Notable brands to shrinkflate their products in recent months as the American dollar continues to lessen in value include Charmin, Bounty, and Gatorade. As bottom lines continue to tighten, more companies are starting to follow. Joining the parade of downsized products, Honey Bunches of Oats, which I told you about, uh, we, uh, which has seen the weight of the standard box previously four and a half ounces less into just 12 ounces. Another shrinkflation, uh, shrinkflation casualty to emerge in recent weeks was Folgers 
Instant Coffee, which shrank the size of its canister, canisters by seven and a half ounces. Wow. That's yeah. A lot. I wow. know. I know. Uh, you know, so it's not just the prices. Are go- you know, I thought this because we've gotten like some bags of chips. And I'll eat the chips and they're like gone. Yeah. And, and I, you know, I don't pay attention to this shrinkflation, but it seems to me. They fill them with air. Yeah, the potato chip bags, the regular size ones, they do look a little smaller, the bag itself, but inside, it's like what you get in those little mini lunch lunch pail size potato. They hardly put chips in the yep. chip bags anymore. Yeah, it's really a, it's really. So that's a double hit. It is, and it, and it has a, an almost immediate effect on the economy. And I think over the next few months, I don't think things are going to change because Biden, his press secretary came out and said, this is Trump's fault. That Trump left us a bad economy. Is she joking? Mm. I mean, he refuses, refuses to take responsibility. Look, that's fine. You don't want to take responsibility, fine. But you need to fix the problem. You don't have to take responsibility to fix it. Fix the problem. But I think what we've seen is Joe Biden is incapable of fixing any problems. He just creates problems. Yeah, that's true. You know, Hillary Clinton tweeted. I don't know if she really tweets. I can't imagine. She's got to have somebody tweet for her. I think she does. I think she has nothing better to do. Uh, you know why I don't think she tweets be- herself because she's an alcoholic and she would be drunk tweeting and there would be typos and misspellings and things because she's hammered all the time. I think I'd like her drunk tweets better than regular. Oh, tweets. yeah, It'd I'd be read more those. Fun. I'd read those. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. But there's no way she's tweeting because the drunk tweets would be porn. She'd be tweeting like at, you know, one thirty in the morning. And it'd all be misspelled and everything. But she tweeted earlier today. Or at least it came out on Hillary's Twitter account. Fox News won't air the January 6th hearings because they prefer their sedition made fresh on site. That, that doesn't sound like Hillary Clinton. Does that sound like something Hillary Clinton I don't even know in? what that means. I guess they think not carrying it. They're not carrying it because it's on tape, so it's like old know, maybe sedition. Maybe it was a drunk Hillary because it makes no sense. No, it makes sense. She says they like their sedition live not watching it on tape from like a year and a half ago. Well, isn't that the way it should be, where you watch it live and see in real time what's happening without being edited and uh, added a soundtrack to it? Exactly. Exactly. What the hell is she talking she, about? Well, I don't know, but I, I don't think she does her tweet. Then someone else tweeted, who's a person I've never heard of before. They got a blue check mark. But uh, anyway, they said, if Fox News doesn't broadcast the January 6th committee hearing, they shouldn't be allowed back in the White House pre- briefing room as a legitimate news organization. This is not legitimate news because of the highly produced nature mm-hmm. of what we're doing, of what they're doing, of what we, we talked about in the first segment. This should not be carried by anyone because it is altered news. It's not real news. It's altered news. Exactly. Well, that's what they're in the business of, Brian. They're in the business of altering news. Yeah. That's, that's, so. that's exactly Well, that's Elon exactly Musk right. has come out saying that he can cancel his Twitter deal. Um, Without paying a billion dollars? Because uh, because the company, let's see what it says here, he can cancel his Twitter deal because the company is actively resisting his efforts to study fake accounts. I think he's, I don't think he's going to, I've said this for weeks, I don't think he's going to go through with this purchase because Trump is not going to come back to Twitter. And I think without Trump, Twitter is pretty worthless. And if they're not going to reveal their fake accounts, I mean, half of Twitter could be fake, maybe more. I think it's more than half. And and that means it's not valued as much, okay? Like if you have a company and half your customers are fake customers, your value of your company well, goes way you down. Know, you know they, what I mean? That's not, that doesn't help the value of the company. Well, you know, Trump put out on Truth yesterday that it's all bots. And, you know, when this deal first was talked about, we were talking about this. These celebrities and the the blue checkmark mm-hmm. people, they have hundreds of thousands. Some of them have millions of followers, mm-hmm. and we know, everyone knows, that a huge percentage of them, in many cases, the vast majority oh, yeah. of them, are fake bots. And the bots also interact. They, there's fake interaction and everything. And, you know, Twitter, social media was around before Twitter became big, but Twitter became big because the media and Trump, and they made it important. And if the the media, f- Twitter drives the news cycle, and it started really. Twitter really started driving the news cycle mm-hmm. when Trump ran for president the oh, first yeah, time, and he started sure. using it. That's 
And that's when the media started going to Twitter for, okay, what's going on? Let's go he to really Twitter. He really legitimized Twitter in, in many ways when, yeah. you, when you think about it. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And it really wasn't that big of a deal before Trump started using it, so far as news goes. Right. But I, I'm, I, I was telling you when this deal was first discussed, yeah. Twitter doesn't just drive the, the politics and the news. It, there's a lot of currency manipulation mm-hmm. involved in it. Oh, yeah. A lot of the cryptocurrencies are falsely inflated through oh, Twitter. Yeah. I think so. And – the the bots and the fake engagement and things that are involved in Twitter are involved in so many types of of crimes, right? Currency inflation and all of this because of the of the fake bot at activity. I hope that if if Elon Musk does not buy Twitter, I hope he is able to truly expose what percentage of it are bots that are fake. I think it is. Far above 50%. First off, you've got a lot of people that have multiple accounts that they Mm -hmm. don't use. I mean, how many of you out there have set up accounts years ago on Twitter that you don't use anymore, that you went to another account, or you let people die, you know? So Twitter is filled with inactive accounts just because of that, a huge chunk of them, right? Then you have the bots, which are huge. You know, I, um, I, there is no way you can convince me that the engagement of a lot of these people on Twitter and their followers are not mainly bots. Yeah, I think there's so. just there's and just I think no they way pay for engagement. Yes, they do. And um, yeah, I think I think that's safe to say across a lot of social media. Oh yeah, you know, yeah, you know. I did not know this until when Trump ran for president the first time. I did not know that you could do this, but you can buy it's it's advertising. You can buy a trending topic mm-hmm. on on Twitter. Now, most people probably know this now, but I remember Trump did this. The Trump campaign in 2015, it was a couple hundred thousand dollars at the time to do this. They bought a trending topic after one of his rallies. I can't remember which one it was. Mm -hmm. I did not know you could do that. Yeah. So just because something is trending does not necessarily mean it's organic. No, it doesn't mean that's what everybody's talking about or or concerned about or believes about or anything like that. Yeah. Twitter is it, it social media is really a poison. Yeah. And it is. It I really is. I was always very resistant to using the internet and everything, but when we we started this podcast 10 years ago, you know, is when I I didn't have any social media till we started the podcast. And you you've got to be online if you especially if you're doing a podcast, but in the business I'm in and I'm on everything and I'm on, you know, of course I'm on YouTube as well and I do all this stuff. And you know, but I, social media, in particular, Twitter is a poison. I like what Bill O'Reilly calls Twitter. He calls it the Twitter mob. And Twitter, which was made popular by President Trump, I agree with you, Kathy. Twitter, I don't think, is worth much unless Trump were to go back on it. No, and he, I agree. He has been adamant that he will not go back on Twitter under any no, circumstances. he won't. Truth, mm. He's really pushing truth social, and why not? He's got like a whole new media company. And he might even launch some other social media well, platforms. Elon Musk, I think, is going to expose this because if he just pulls out of the deal, he's got to pay like a billion dollars. But if he if he pulls out of the deal because they have artificially inflated their value with the bots and he expose he he may have to expose how much of it are bots oh, he will. to get out of the billion dollar fee for pulling yeah. out. <clears throat> he will because you know? What he would say is that he went into the deal and they were lying and they were being dishonest of the of the value of the well. Company. It seems it seems that Twitter knows the Twitter executives. They believe me, they know exactly what percentage of, of their course. of their members, you know, of, of their accounts and their engagement mm-hmm. that are bots, yep. and they're not allowing people to know this. To me, that's a financial crime because right. it's a publicly traded Deceptive. company. It's a publicly traded company. Right. So they're, they are artificially inflating the company's value, yep. knowing whatever percentage of it are bots. And I think you can go to prison for that. Well, we'll see what happens. But I, yeah. I, I've said this, and I, I still think that he's, this is, deal is not going to happen. You know what? I don't care because Trump's on truth. And the only interesting thing about Twitter would be if Trump came back. And yeah. when, when Elon Musk first announced it, I was excited about that. But he says he won't, so who cares about Twitter? <laughs> well, I kind of – I want Elon Musk to buy it. 
I mean, I'm I'm excited well, what, for him what, to buy it. If he did well, if he did, I agree. I would like him to buy it. I think it would be a better place. It would certainly be a more honest place. So I would like to see that. But in that regard, yes, maybe it would make a big difference. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe yeah. it would make a big difference in the news and maybe mm-hmm. it would expose a lot of things. Um, you know, so maybe I'm wrong about that. Now, listen, we're going to take a quick break. When we get back, we are going to get into our audio soundbite section of the program. We got some good ones to share and to discuss with you. Don't go anywhere. We're going to take a quick break and be right back after this. From Amazon bestselling author and survivor, Sandrian Nelson Moon, comes the book Restored, a journey from abuse to deliverance. Now available for pre-order online at sandriannelsonmoon.com. After being raped and asked by her abductor to be his girlfriend, she negotiated her escape. Take a journey with the author as she reveals the truth and how because of it, God's timely deliverance unraveled her purpose and unwaveringly healed her pain. This journey is one of finding peace and transformation, even when it seems impossible. The author speaks for many disenfranchised women while demonstrating the need to heal and find their purpose. Restored, a journey from abuse to deliverance from Amazon bestselling author Sandrian Nelson Moon is now available for pre-order online at sandriannelsonmoon.com. Available in both paperback and hardcover. Pre-order your copy right now. Brian Craig here with a huge announcement from the Thomas Edison of Sleep, the inventor of the My Pillow, Mike Lindell, and My Pillow are now offering a Bogo extravaganza on multiple My Pillow items right now at mypillow.com with our promo code Kane K A N E at checkout. Buy one get free pricing on My Pillow bed sheets, Giza Elegance My Pillows, the six piece My Pillow towel set, and the My Pillow Roll and Go Anywhere My Pillows, and so much more. Just go. Go to MyPillow.com. Click on the radio listener specials. Use the promo code Kane, K-A-N-E, at checkout or call toll-free 800-716-4879. 800-716-4879. The Bogo Extravaganza at MyPillow.com with the promo code Kane, K-A-N-E, at checkout. And with each purchase for free, you will get a copy of Mike Lindell's autobiography. Call 800 800- 716-4879 800-716-4879 or go to the radio listener special page at MyPillow.com and use the promo code Kane K-A-N-E From author Steve Lillard comes the book Becoming a Son of God available on Amazon All around us, we see people who are struggling with some form of fear, sadness, anxiety, or depression. Different people have different reactions. Some seek medication, while others seek therapy. Then there are those who isolate themselves. Others resort to drugs and alcohol to numb themselves from outside influences. These are all forms of searching for peace, but true peace comes from within. It is often a challenge for new believers to stay on the right path. The culture we live in has exposed our youth to a lot of questionable content that has shifted them away from finding their identity as sons and daughters of God. Becoming a son of God examines the relationship from a natural and spiritual point of view. In this must-read book, readers will gain a clear understanding of why Jesus Christ came to redeem the world out of sin and why your relationship with Him is essential to receive all that He has purposed and destined for your life. Order your copy right now on Amazon, Becoming a Son of God, from author Stephen Lillard. Available in Kindle and paperback. From author and licensed psychotherapist France Lamore comes a book that's a blueprint to help readers live what you deserve, your best life. Seven life-giving words to live your best life. Available on Amazon. The author has witnessed firsthand the effects it takes to rise above everything that tries to keep us down. We want to live our best life, but sometimes we don't know how. Through seven practical lessons and relevant scriptures on words of love, forgiveness, healing, salvation, authority, peace, and grace, seven life-giving words to live your best life will breathe new resilience and energy into your daily walk and help you master the art of living your best life one day at a time. You can live your best life. Order your copy of Seven Life-Giving Words to Live Your Best Life from licensed psychotherapist and author France Lamore. Available in Kindle and paperback on Amazon. You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast. 
Broadcasting from sunny South Florida, Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. We are back. This is one of the amazing things about living in Florida. Not just that we have Ron DeSantis as our governor True. and There's President so many Trump amazing lives here. Things. Yeah, President Trump lives here. But in the last segment, I was telling you it is raining as hard as it was, maybe even harder and heavier than during the tropical storm on Saturday. And now the rain has stopped and the sun is coming out yeah. just it was a like few a minutes monsoon. later. Yeah. And that's, that's how, how it is, is in Florida. It's, it's very, very rare for it to rain all day. In fact, yeah. Last week when we had the tropical storm, it rained all day, and that's very, very rare. Usually oh, yeah. it rains for like 20 minutes. It could be torrential, and then boom, it's it's done. And another thing, you could be driving in torrential rains. It's the way the clouds are formed, and then all of a sudden, boom, it literally instantly stops, yeah. and you're in bright sunshine. That's You could be yeah. raining on one side of the street and sunny on the other. That's really how it is here. Now, this Roe v. Wade decision, it does, I, I mean, I don't, when's the Supreme Court coming out with know. this? It's ridiculous. Some lunatic women went to Joel Olstein's church in Texas. During a service, mm. Joel Olstein is praying. They get up and they rip off their clothes except for their underwear and bras. Oh, and they goodness. start screaming like lunatics. How proud their parents must be. And uh, you'll hear, I'm going to play the audio of this. You're going to hear some bleeps. Those bleeps, F words were there. So they're in a church taking off their clothes. They're in their underwear. Oh my goodness gracious. Yelling out the There's F no word. There's no dignity anymore. No, they're not, not very later. Like, but listen to these loons. Listen to this. It's my body, my I, I, choice. I, I, it's four, my body, four. my choice. Four, wait, just Overturn, girls. Hell God no. My body, my choice. I am who I say I am. I do what I say I can do because I have a choice. I have a choice. I have a choice. Okay, then they, they ran like them out. It's a Trump rally. <laughs> yeah, they were, the applause happened when they took the women out in their underwear. You notice Joel Osteen didn't miss a beat. Well, he was still preaching the you background. Know what? I don't think he even knew what was going on. That, I, I that saw, place is so big. I saw the camera of this, and the place is so big, I don't think Joel Osteen knew what was going on until it was over. Because it's just so, it's a oh, huge that arena. place is huge. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. don't think so either, because he was just... Yeah going on and on and he's got the lights on him and the audience yeah, is dark so. and he can't hear they were close to the phone that was recording it's probably their friend who recorded that yeah. you know what a, what a couple of lunatics what yeah. does joel That's olstein how liberals are they're idiots they're, they're crazy people what does joel olstein have to do with a supreme court decision nothing nothing no else. he's this he's just he, a stunt he's so far removed from that yeah. i i never hear him talk about anytime i see him all he's doing is peddling a book of his Mm -hmm. I've never seen him involved in any issue. I've never heard him talk about pro life or anything. You know, he's I, made a few liberal has political he? statements. Yeah, he's a little woke. Remember, his wife got in some trouble on an airplane years ago and had to go to court. Yeah, yeah. I don't like the Osteens, but I, I his hair's too fluffy, and you know, he wears like five thousand dollar Armani suits. I, I just don't see him as being a real man of God. But hey. Live and let live. Other people like him, I guess. Yeah. My stepfather went to his church once. Uh, he was in Texas. He said it's so huge. Like, it's like a stadium, you know, an it indoor is a stadium. stadium area. And I just cannot imagine the money that place brings in. Oh, my it's so goodness. funny because, you know, his church comes from the Protestant thing. And Protestants left the Catholic church over their ostentatiousness the selling of indulgences well that and the money they had the money they were collecting mm -hmm. from people and now you have and 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 if you look at the early protestants they were very humble they didn't adorn their churches they would not like these flashy services with the lights and the props and the fancy clothes and the singing and the dancing and all this it's like a broadway show that totally goes against the what protestantism is really founded on which was very plain churches very solemn, no glitziness. You know, that's what they were rebelling against was the gold and the the ostentatiousness of the Catholic Church and the flashiness, what they saw it as flashy back then. And now these churches have become even more flashy. You know, priests and nuns don't live flashy lives. They're very humble people. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure the church brings in a lot of money, but it's a global church. So obviously that's gonna happen, but they do a lot for charity. 
But, um, you know, it's just kind of funny how the Protestants have gotten away from that humble beginning that they were well, fighting against the these, Catholic Church for. These two women obsessing over abortion. They're, what a couple of lunatics. They're, they're mentally fighting ill. for the right to kill their they're, kid. They're, compl- they're completely yeah. mentally ill. Yeah, obviously. And if you, if you see them in the video, you can see it. Yeah. I don't know what – it just makes no sense to go no. where it is they're going. I don't know what they were trying to prove. So they, I don't they, know. They like, proved nothing. That they just that they were crazy. That they're mentally ill. Yeah, that's yeah. all they proved. I mean, there's they're not. They're, what do they say on TV? They're not moving the needle. No. So so Jean Pierre, the spokesperson for Biden, now she gave this interview with Good Morning America, Robin Roberts, this big suck up interview. You know, and uh, I just want to play this one part. She was talking about gun control. She talked about a lot of things, but it, it, I didn't find it very interesting. But I, I just wanted to play one thing that she says here. She's talking about the Uvalde and everything been uh, a a tragic three weeks uh, with uh, Uvalde and then Buffalo. And I traveled, I traveled with the president to to Buffalo um, to talk to the grieving, uh, the grieving grieving families of the 10 who were doing what what many of us do on the weekends, go to the grocery store. And uh, sadly, their lives were taken by this this, uh, public health epidemic that we're seeing of gun violence. And And so I wanted to play this Public health mm. epidemic. You called See, this a long you know, time ago. I saw about this years ago, yeah. See, the, the Democrats, the Second yep. Amendment gets in their way, so they're decla- – like with racism, yep. they're calling the gun a health epi- epidemic. And yep. she just dropped that there. You said they were going to do that like two years ago, make yeah. it a public health issue. That's exa- And that's exactly what they're doing, they and it's not that. They slowly, creepily change the narrative, change the wording, and now you're going to start hearing this on the news mm. all the time. This is how the brainwashing begins yep. and how they get their liberal masses mm-hmm. to um, uh, go along for the ride and agree with them and repeat their talking points. Oh, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden you're going to be hearing people saying it's a public health issue and this and that. Mm-hmm. You know, that's, yeah. that's where they're headed with that. Yeah. Now, I want to take a moment to thank all of our Patreon supporters for their support of the program. Thank you all for your support. It does help us out a lot. And if you would like to become a Patreon supporter, there is a link in the description of this and every episode. You click on that link. It takes you to our Patreon page. Now, the link may not be clickable depending on what platform you're listening to us on. You may have to copy and paste it. But the uh, website address is patreon.com. Slash Real Brian Craig Show. And our top Patreon supporters get a live on air thank you shout out on each and every episode. So the names you will hear now are our top Patreon supporters. I want to thank Andrew and Connie, Christine, Gary, ETW, Chuck, D, Pamela, Nick, Rick, and Rich. And we're also, we have a new top Patreon supporter that we're adding to the list of top Patreon supporters, and that's Wesley. Welcome, Wesley. Yay, Wesley. To the top Patreon supporter club. All right. Um, Oh, yeah, one more soundbite I want to play. This was on CNN. They had one of their guests, one of their congressmen guests, and uh, they're talking about the January 6th primetime hearings, and uh, they say something about Trump here I wanted to share. Listen. No better today than it was prior to January 6th. I I wonder, for folks watching at home now, should they be concerned that these midterms coming up might be marred by violence? We all should be concerned about the midterms being harmed, and all public officials should be concerned about their own safety, I fear. Uh, Jonathan Martin, our friend who wrote uh, This Shall Not Pass, makes that clear in his book that this is something that is a continuing part of American government, American politics, the the fealty to Trump continues, and the encouragement to the white supremacist and the terrorists to, to be involved continues. I had no doubt on January 6th, I felt my life was in danger when I was in the gallery. And when I was there, I hollered down to the floor and said, call Trump and ask him to call off his revolutionary guard. Wow, call off your revolutionary guard. Well, maybe they shouldn't have let them in the door. Yeah, exactly. That might you know, have stopped things. Greg Kelly last night. Let who, the waltz on in, open the yeah. doors, and open and bring in the welcome wagon. That's right. They let them in. They opened the gate. Yeah. They opened the doors. They were they they were standing there where they were busting windows, doing a, not doing a damn thing. So yeah. give me a break. You know, uh, Greg Kelly last night on his show on Newsmax TV was showing the oh, um, yeah. footage and he showed that footage that they don't like to show you on CNN, and I know it's not going to be part of the primetime January 6th hearing God, coverage. No. He shows the uh, Capitol breachers walking through the Capitol Rotunda, and they're all walking between those velvet rope yeah. lines that they have 
perfectly in and out. They come in and they come out walking between those velvet, you know, the, you know what I'm talking about? Like at a bank, yeah. you know, and they have a museums and stuff. They weren't very disorderly, you know, they were not very disorderly, not it, you know, and, and of course the Capitol breach was wrong. Yeah. You know, yeah. You know. Uh, and I and I do believe that it was wrong. But when you when you look at that footage, the people that were breaking the window and trying to break the door down, the one where Ashley Babbitt was killed, yeah. no doubt in my mind, Antifa. No you, doubt. You, you see you the, way by the way Antifa, they look. Do those guys look like MAGA to you? No, no. They're and, all wearing black. They're like twenty four year old uh, yeah. soy boys that weigh a hundred pounds. Give and the break. And the footage where you have seen. Ashley Babbitt shot and killed. Yeah. That footage was taken by that Black Lives Matter guy, John Sullivan, Don, John Sullivan wearing MAGA gear. Also, yep. w- the footage of the guys breaking the window outside the Capitol, climbing through and open up the door. Those guys wearing black. Those guys are Antifa too. Yeah. Now that's not justifying people going in. Okay. No. Okay. That was wrong. Uh, don't misunderstand me. And the way that some of the people behaved in there was in the guy that put his feet up on Pelosi's desk. But they're and not that. presenting, and and this will happen when the hearing. They're not presenting to you the whole full picture, and they never will. They're selectively choosing what they want to show you with a nice little narration, correct, uh, and possibly soundtrack underneath that's mm-hmm. going to present it to you like a movie almost, yes, uh, like a documentary type thing. And I think that's what they're going to be doing. And they're going to leave out the part where the police opened the gates, where the police opened the doors while they walked on in, where the police were, were sitting there chatting with the shaman in the congressional big room where they all go. They were sitting there shooting the breeze with that guy, mm-hmm. having a little conversation, chatting like nothing. You know, uh, I didn't see the cops actively trying to stop these people. They were letting them in the building. So, but they're not going to show that to you. Like I, like you, I agree. It wasn't right what was what was happening. Obviously, we don't condone that. But they're leaving out the fact that these Capitol Police let them in and helped facilitate this. They have a role in this, too. And you have to ask yourself, why were they doing that? Why were they acting that way? Who told them to do this? Who told them to stand And out? those are the questions that will never be asked by this no. kangaroo committee. There's there's a lot of questions, but there's two things in particular I'm curious about. I want to know outside the Capitol who this one masked officer was that was showing everybody the front door to go in. That's one. And the second thing I'd like to know, the two officers that were in front of the door where Ashley Babbitt was killed, right before that happened with her, they walked away from the door and let Absolutely. the people go up and smash it in. I want to know who those guys are. Well, and I read an article that the ultimate goal is to charge Trump with sedition. That is By their the ultimate yeah. goal. And uh, he is the, the the door prize that they want. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't see that happening because he didn't do anything like that. Um, but that, let's well, see where this goes. The committee is going to release a report. It'll mm-hmm. come out in book form like the 9-11 Commission report and, and, and the Watergate reports and all that stuff. And the, the, com- the commissions, this January 6th kangaroo committee, their, their finding will be that Donald Trump was um, in, involved in an insurrection. They're going to do this to try to keep him off yep, the ballot exactly. in the primaries and, and in I the general election. And I think there will be some states that will uh, keep him off the ballot That's right. as well. And what I worry about, well, the, I don't know, this can't happen, I guess, in the general election, but in these primaries where they have states where they have crossovers where both parties can vote, you have a lot of liberals voting for certain Republicans to affect crossover that, primaries, crossover primaries yeah. which I don't like. Yeah. Now, listen, we're going to take our last break. When we come back, there is more to talk about. Don't miss the last segment. I saw something today that just blew my mind, and I'm going to share it with you after the break. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. We will be back right after this break. Are your pants falling down? There is a solution. Skinny Clip, available on Amazon and SkinnyClip.com. Belts are bulky, uncomfortable, and expensive. Skinny Clip replaces the belt. Skinny Clip is an easy-to-use waistband tightener for men and women. It can easily work to tighten a belt on pants that are too loose. Skinny Clip tightens your pants without a belt. Maybe you lost some weight and you don't want to buy a new wardrobe. Maybe someone gave you clothes that you love, but they're a little too big. Skinny Clip can make them fit 
just right. Skinny Clip is a newly patented invention that holds up oversized pants easily and comfortably. It's easy to use, too. Simply slide your waistband, twist, and hook. That's it. It works great on all types of fabric, skirts, slacks, jeans, and shorts. It's perfect for blue jeans that loosen up during the day. It's affordable and available in multiple colors. Your satisfaction is guaranteed. Skinny Clip, when you're skinny for yourself. Skinny Clip is available on Amazon. Just search Skinny Clip or visit the website skinnyclip.com. Are you looking for a memorable Father's Day gift for your dad or husband? The new book from author M.J. Connor. M, available on Amazon, is the perfect gift that the father in your life will love to read. In M, meet Justin Roberts. He's a doctoral student, an expert in Hitler's National Socialism. Justin discovers a mysterious World War II journal smuggled out of East Germany. Inside, the author ingeniously inserted a coded message meant only for the free West. He enlists the help of a secret network of Cold War spies to solve the code and decipher the message. The stakes are raised when Justin receives a startling warning. He flees and is pursued by an assassin in a heart-stopping race for survival. When Justin's solution is later questioned, he elicits help from pharmacist Dr. Angela Keenan. In a shocking twist, their stories converge and a plot to create a power vacuum in the United States government is uncovered. With only a few hours before the coup, Angela and Justin must escape the assassin and save the victims. What happens next is thrilling and heart-pounding. M. From author M. J. Connor is available on Amazon and Kindle, paperback, and hardcover editions. This is a great gift for Father's Day. Order your copy right now. CryptoBlox DAO has been to the moon and it's made of blocks. Inspired by Minecraft, the number one selling game of all time, CryptoBlox DAO is a collection of 10,000 NFTs and the blocks token that make up the DAO. Blockchains are based on decentralization, which means they're not controlled by a single central authority like the government. And that is exactly what DAO delivers to a company or organization. CryptoBlox DAO provides a platform that will offer an opportunity for its holders to contribute and participate in the project discussions through voting and adding real utilities to its ecosystem. To learn more, visit CryptoBlocksDAO.com. That's DAO, D-A-O. From bedrock to the moon, CryptoBlocksDAO.com. You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast. Broadcasting from sunny South Florida, Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. Now, this is not what I... I'm going to tell you about something I watched during the break. This was not what I was telling you before. That's something that just blew my mind. But I, I watched... Adam Lambert and Queen perform mm. at the Queen's Jubilee on YouTube. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I, Adam Lambert, he's a good singer, but it's not the same. I, it's I don't, not the I don't same. think he's that great. No, he's, he just doesn't. Uh, well, it's hard to measure up to Freddie Mercury. I mean, it's just, sure. I'm listening to the songs and it's, but I, I'll I'm tell you. I'm surprised they didn't bring in another British singer to. Yeah. Was with someone to, with a stronger voice. Yeah. But, you know, Adam Lambert almost destroyed his career when he simulated sex on, was it Good Morning America or the Today Show? <laughs> simulated fellatio. And, and here he is at Incredible. the Queen's Jubilee. Yeah. All right, no, what, what I saw that was just something just amazed me, I want to get to now here um, at the end of the show, uh, that a, a listener called and left me a voicemail at the radio station about Mm. something I had to watch, and I went and watched it. It involves the baby formula crisis. Mm. You know, the the it's a baby famine that's going on. And I got a call today on the radio from a grandmother. Her and her entire family have been searching America for baby formula for her grandchild, and her daughter has been forced to dilute the baby formula because even powder's in short supply now. And it's just, it's just awful. And she told us that her ex-husband, he's in Texas, he drove to Mexico and was able to get some baby formula and bring yeah. it back to America. And I watched- I don't a, know what these parents are doing. This is incredible. I don't want to know. It's scary. It's, it's scary to me. It's scary to me. I really, I could not imagine. So this listener called and left me a message and said, you got to watch this video. A guy went to Mexico. He went to multiple stores in Mexico. He went to grocery stores. He went to even a Costco in Mexico. They have 
overflowing shelves of not just baby formula, the American brands of the baby formula. He went to Costco in Mexico. They have pallet after pallet filled with baby formula. Mm-hmm. The shortage is only in well, they the probably United have States. factories mm-hmm. there that that like Coca Cola has bottling companies. They probably have factories in Mexico that produce it for that country, the the, mm-hmm. the manufacturer, but. Yeah, it's it's really a shame. And um, what what upset me was when she said her daughter had to dilute the formula. And I talked to her today because we reached out to her and I talked to her on the phone. Yeah, that's not acceptable. And uh, she said that the, her grandson was born premature, which I can relate to because our daughter was premature. And preemie babies have to eat all the time. And uh, to have to dilute the formula is very upsetting. So she told me the kind of formula he's uh, having. And I looked on Amazon, I looked at our local Walgreens, our local Publix, and Walmart, and I finally found some at the local Target. So I ordered some to send out to her daughter in Texas, but it's going to take about a week to get here. They won't ship it directly there. I have to ship it to me, and then we have to go ship it to her. But what I would say is if you know somebody who has a baby in the family, like my best friend is going to be a grandmother again in three weeks. If you know someone who has a baby or a grandbaby, reach out to them and ask them how they're doing with the formula. Do they need help? Can you help them? You can check your local stores, check your local target and send them some, find out the kind they use because babies are very picky and only certain formulas will work and find out if you can help and if you can send them something. I think that's something we can all do as Americans to help each other and reach out. Um, well, you, you know, know don't these, you agree? the, yeah, these, these baby formula companies, these American companies that have full shelves in Mexico. And I haven't heard of a it's baby incredible. formula shortage in Canada either. No. So the American companies have plenty of formula in Canada and Mexico. We're seeing evidence of this. Mm-hmm. P- there should be executives arrested over this. There. You know, the children of America in these last couple of years have suffered beyond imagination. They're not getting a proper education because of the shutdowns of the schools. They've suffered there. We've seen kids off to college that didn't even complete high school for a couple of years. And our our children are behind education-wise because every subject of every year builds off of one another. And now this this shortage of baby formula – at the at the most important times for a, a baby is going to have long term health effects on these children when they get older. Yes, and that's true. And also Enfamil, which is a popular formula brand, and there's Similac. But Enfamil, I know they make vitamins that you can get. They're, they're, they are on Amazon. And it's like I don't know if it's a powder or a liquid or what, but you can add it to the formula. So I would look into that, into adding these extra vitamins. If you have to ration your formula and you're worried about the nutrients, there are vitamins you can add. I'm assuming it's a powder to formula to enhance that. So look into that. It's online. And I asked this woman, what did her daughter's pediatrician tell her? She said, oh, give him baby food. That's what her pediatrician said. You can't give, you can't even give milk to a baby till they're six or nine months old. You can't start introducing food till they're about... I'd say seven, eight, nine months. And then it's like, you know, very, very gradually, very slowly start introducing like the, you know, the soft pudding like baby food. Maybe when they're eight, nine months old, you can yeah. start introducing that stuff. Um, the first six months, though, they have to be on formula. You can start introducing milk, I think, when they're six months old. But when you're a preemie, you got to add on to that. So if your baby is born, like our daughter was born seven weeks early, you have to add seven weeks onto those six months. So our daughter had to be on formula for seven and a half months. I don't know what we would have done. I, my mom probably, knowing her, would have gone to Canada, where she's from, and shipped a bunch back home to me because I would have been in a complete panic over this. And anybody who says breastfeed, they don't know what the hell they're talking about. A lot of babies cannot tolerate breast milk. That's right. A lot of mothers cannot breastfeed. And let me tell you, breast milk is very thin. It's thinner than formula you buy. So babies need to eat more often. Correct. It gets digested much more quickly. And my best friend, when she had children, she tried to breastfeed. And she said her son wanted to feed like every 90 minutes. And she mm-hmm. said, "I, you know, boys eat more than girls. And she said, I just couldn't 
do that. She said it was exhausting and I had to sleep. And she said, you know, it's just next to impossible for some women to do that. So, and some well, other women just don't produce you know, enough milk. It's that's not true. that easy. All that's true. And I'm so disgusted by the media yeah. that, you know, I'm, I'm watching people on YouTube in Mexico show the formula and, and, and others elsewhere on social media. The, the, the news media have the resources. They need to go to Canada. They need to go to Mexico. They need to show where there is no shortage and really get to the root of this. And they're useless. The they're government, not going to do anything like no, that. That takes work. The White House, they're saying, oh, July, it'll be out there. I don't believe anything these people say. Why should we believe that? So babies have to wait another month. And, and I don't care what they say. If you're rationing baby food where you're putting less than the recommended amount and mixing it with oh, water, terrible. um, your baby is getting less nutrients, uh, than they need to. So that's why I said, look into these extra vitamins for, that you can add to formula. Mm -hmm. I saw that. I didn't know they could do that. And if you know somebody who has a baby, please reach out to them and ask them how you can help and scour your local stores. I just went on target and, and it was there and you couldn't even pick it up in the store. You had to get it shipped to you. So they're like really rationing this stuff where you can't even buy it in the store anymore. But, but I was able to order it and have it shipped to me. It won't arrive till Friday, but then I'm going to, we're going to ship it out to her daughter. So. Yeah. And one last, I got her four containers. So one last thing good. I wanted to talk about um, before we go, because Kathy and I were talking about this yesterday, not on the show, but just amongst ourselves. Mm -hmm. These primaries, there's, there's these big debates and recalls over these DAs and the, and the and oh, crime. Oh, yeah. Big mess. And Democrats are soft on crime. We all know this. Yes. And we were talking about why are Democrats soft on crime? And I think – and you guys, let us know in the comments why you think Democrats are soft on crime. Yeah. My belief is the Democrats are criminals, and they relate to them. Yeah, I, I think I mean, that's, that's part of it. That's, yeah. I think that's definitely part of it. And I also feel that liberals have a God complex – and they feel the need to save everybody because, see, they don't believe in God. They're the God. And they feel it is their job to save people, save them from themselves, and, and help them along. And it makes them feel empowered to help these lowly people that, and need to, them, yeah. that need their help and guidance. No, criminals don't need help. They need to be locked up in jail. But, you know, every liberal policy we are seeing is failing. It is because they're running amok. And yeah. nobody's pulling them back and saying, this is not a good idea. Yeah. Every radical liberal policy they're putting out there and it's all coming back to slap mm -hmm. them right in the face. So, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, this talk, you know, with Matthew McConaughey, you know, we had mentioned the shooter in Uvalde, his grandmother had a criminal record. His mother had a criminal record yeah. and his father had a criminal record. Yeah. So you've got a family of criminals and. You know, people and get, then the mother excused him. Yeah. Oh, he had his reasons. Yeah. What the hell? And, you know, people, they they do crime. They get a slap on the wrist. Right. So what do criminals do? They commit more crime because they got away with it the first time. And that's one of the problems that leads to things like Uvalde. Yeah. And then you have all these people being attacked in New York randomly on the subways and just walking down the street because That's right. the liberal DA there is letting them all out. They they really mm -hmm. feel, and I think this is a more of a minority issue. And I don't I don't mean to sound you know controversial here, but I think a lot of it has to do with the minority community that they feel. Um, if you have a black DA or even some liberal DA with liberal guilt, yeah. they feel there's too many black men in jail, and so we have to help alleviate that problem. Well, I understand that, you know, and you want to tip the scales a little bit and they feel rehabilitation, but then, mm -hmm. you know, that just doesn't work like this kid that yeah. hit this woman walking her baby. Did you see that video the other yeah, day? It's awful. Ran her over. He gave her, he gave that kid five months, like at yeah. a summer camp without jail for, for attempted murder. People are outraged. Mm -hmm. This, you have to have a DA, a DA's job is to put criminals behind bars. Mm -hmm. That is their job. District attorneys prosecute criminals. How can you be a DA when you're letting people go free and you're not prosecuting them and putting yeah. them away? I don't understand yeah. how you're, you're – well, it's the opposite of you what know, you're part, supposed part to Part of it is about 10 years ago, George Soros got in the business of – donating to the campaigns. There you go. Well, that's probably attorneys. the reason they're doing this. All and Ryan. the district attorneys are Soros back. That's right. And you know, like that's any, what Harris Faulkner said, like any other, ele all elected officials do whatever their donors say, because they that's need right. that money to run. 
So that's a big factor in. We've had yeah. a decade of George Soros back district attorneys. I think you hit the nail and, on the head. And that's a that's a big one. I can think of nothing more stupid than no bail. Yeah, I that's think you're right. I don't think seen. it's that I don't think it's the reasons we gave. That might be a part of it, but I think what it really comes down to is money. And I think they're being paid to look the other way. That's how these corrupt And they all want that are. Soros money. I heard George Soros interviewed live on Air America Radio. Remember Air America Radio, yeah. guys, the liberal network? And he was being interviewed live on Air America Radio, and the host that was interviewing him was asking him for money on the air during the show because he's like such the big Democrat sugar What is daddy. his end game? I don't know too much about him. I mean, I he's don't, at, seems like he's out to destroy this country. That's what my mom said. There, he's out to destroy you America. Know, there's, um, there's a movie that Spike Lee made. It's a, a, I, I like bank robbery movies, and it's a bank robbery movie, Inside Man with yeah, Clive Owen. Yeah, it's very Owen. good with and, Christopher Plummer and Jodie Foster. Yeah. Very good movie. In that movie, Christopher Plummer, his character in this Spike Lee movie, Inside Man, uh, Christopher Plummer's character is based on George Soros. Oh, okay. We'll have to watch that again. Yeah. I, I don't know. I like Clive Owen, so I'll watch anything with him twice. I don't know what his game is, but I think George Soros- It's not a good one. No, George Soros, his backing of- yeah, For sure. District attorneys and others- at the local level, at the criminal level, that's that's why the Democrat Party has gotten soft on Well, crime. yeah, I think you're right. And they're going to be voted out because the people are not going to tolerate this. You want to feel safe walking down the streets in your neighborhood. And, you know, what's going on in New York, it's like back in the 70s before Giuliani came along. You know, yeah. I remember as a kid, I was terrified of New York City. I was like, I will never go there. It scared the hell out of me. And then Giuliani cleaned it up, and I went there when Emily was, like, seven years old, and I thought it was the nicest, coolest place. I had a great time. I loved it. I, was, I felt totally safe walking around there. It was beautiful. And now it's another—it's back to being a, a crime-ridden dump in such a short amount of time. Now, Jack Persobig tweeted out uh, something yesterday. This is absolutely amazing. Mm. It is gun homicides per one— Hundred thousand guns owned among a population, and so far, okay, among the number that, that means like for every one hundred thousand guns that are in a country, mm -hmm. the number of homicides. Okay, and they keep telling us that America's number one, number right, one, number right. one. Maybe with the mass shooting incident, like in Uvalde, which is rare, but maybe we have more of those. I don't know if that's true, but they say it's true. But Gun homicides per 100,000 guns owned, the United States is way down on this list. In fact, we're like 18, 22. It's, it's a lot of – let me do the count because there's – Mexico's number one, by the way. Oh, wow. Let, let me count. Let's see. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Do they have seven, gun laws in these other countries? Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 – Wow. The United States is number 22 homicides per 100,000 guns owned. Mexico is number one with 1,268.25 homicides per 100,000 mm. guns owned. Trinidad and Tobago is number two. Uh, El Salvador, Brazil, Honduras, Belize, Colombia, Peru. All these people coming here. Yeah, all the, yeah, the people coming here. Yeah, Colombia, Peru, Guatemala, Venezuela, Ecuador, you know, the whole caravan. Uh, Nicaragua, oh <laughs> pa Panama, Costa Rica, Argentina, Jeez, all Paraguay, South America, except for the one, Bolivia, Guyana, Uruguay, Chile, Suriname, basically all of South America. Yeah, USA is is the is finally there, and then after the United States is Canada, and the United States. Now keep in mind, in Mexico, there's one thousand two hundred sixty eight point two five homicides. In Mexico, per 100,000 gun zones. And there's a lot less people there. Yeah, we're a bigger than, country. Than us. In the U.S., it's 5.49 homicides for every 100,000 guns. And Canada wait a minute, wait is a minute. just two. There, there's five and a half homicides per 100,000 guns? Yeah. That seems pretty damn low. It is very low. It's, it's, it's hard to even measure. I thought measure. it'd be much higher. It's very low. Yeah, Jack Posobiec tweeted wow. this out. And it's over 1,200 per 100,000 guns in Mexico. Oh, my gosh. That's a huge difference. Yeah. So Wow. Us, it's five and a half. Them, it's 1,200. That's I, incredible. I don't want to take away from the tragedy and the loss of lives of these babies. And no, of all these, these are little babies. But the statistics, that's an amazing – isn't that amazing? Yeah, that's shocking. That That's really amazing. Listen, guys, thanks for tuning in, everyone. My name is Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. We will talk to you next time. 
Brian Craig here with a huge announcement from the Thomas Edison of Sleep, the inventor of the My Pillow, Mike Lindell, and My Pillow are now offering a bogo extravaganza on multiple My Pillow items. Right now at mypillow.com with our promo code Kane, K A N E at checkout, buy one get free pricing on My Pillow bed sheets, Giza Elegance My Pillows, the 6-piece My Pillow towel set, and the My Pillow Roll and Go Anywhere My Pillows and so much more. Just Go to MyPillow.com. Click on the radio listener specials. Use the promo code Kane, K-A-N-E, at checkout or call toll-free 800-716-4879. 800-716-4879. The Bogo Extravaganza at MyPillow.com with the promo code Kane, K-A-N-E, at checkout. And with each purchase for free, you will get a copy of Mike Lindell's autobiography. Call 800 800- 716-4879 800-716-4879 or go to the radio listener special page at mypillow.com and use the promo code Kane K-A-N-E 